it's so good to be gathered together to hear God's word and to receive his gifts always, but especially in this Lenten season as we do uh, continue to meet for our midweek Lenten services, and it's a blessing to be gathered together in that way. A reminder for all of you, though, you probably don't need a reminder. Coming up right after our service today, we have another Lenten soup supper that we are able to enjoy together. We invite you to stay for that and to join in some of the fellowship and good food that we're blessed with at 5.30 following our service. Uh, speaking of food, we also have, we want to let you know about coming up on Sunday is our annual Cabin Fever Brock Sale. And that is uh, all the proceeds of that sale will go to support our youth who are going to the LCMS National Youth Gathering in New Orleans this next summer. So we encourage you to, to make plans for some brats on Sunday. In addition to that, I know many of you have taken advantage of the opportunity to buy those delicious Saruji's chocolate bars recently to also support our youth. Well, your, your chances to buy some of those are limited to just tonight and this Sunday. So whether at soup tonight or for brats on Sunday, we encourage you to, to get one of those as well, also in support of our youth. So we continue on in our sermon series. We also have a new Control-Alt-Delete devo devotional book. You'll remember that we talked about these a little bit last week, how Dr. Dale Meyer, the president of Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, has graciously uh, offered to write a devotional to go along with uh, this series, uh, Control-Alt-Delete. And our second installment now is available to pick up in the narthex. You'll know it's a new one because it's on blue paper this week. So please pick up your blue devotional in the narthex before you head home today. As we turn our attention to God's word this day, our theme for today is control, alt, delete, a peaceful pace. We're going to talk about the pace of our lives and what that means. How fast do our lives go? What's the pace that we take our lives at? And how can we get in trouble sometimes by going too fast? Sometimes by going too slow. And God bless us as we grow together in our faith on this Lenten season and always. So as we begin, I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you yet again for bringing us here to hear your word, to receive your gifts, to sing your praises, and to rejoice together as your people. Bless us, especially tonight, as we talk about pace and the pace of our lives, that we might seek in repentance to turn to you and receive forgiveness of all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We begin by singing together our first hymn, Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was the Lord of the dead. He was the Lord of the sins of the people. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, and whose sin is put away. He was the Lord of the dead. He was the Lord of the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered by the dead. He was delivered by the sins of the people. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we do confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have done. And they follow me. 
I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father, for which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If you call them gods to whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Again, they sought to arrest him, but he escaped from their hands. This is the word of the Lord. God. We continue as we sing our next hymn, Jesus' Refuge of the Weird. May God bless our time of meditation together on his word for us as we continue on in this Lenten season and as we continue on in our Lenten sermon series, Control-Alt-Delete, as we continue our Lenten journey from regret to repentance. Well, if you didn't know what it was before our series, you probably know what it is now, right? That Control-Alt-Delete is that famous keyboard combination that helps a computer user get out of a problem, from the blue screen of death to the Apple's spinning beach ball of death. And we also know, well know that we face plenty of problems in our own lives, too, and that all of them stem from the problem of sin, the problem of sin in our world and to which each of us contribute as well. 
As we talked about last week, though, there's also there's a biblical word for control, alt, delete in the real world. In Greek, it's called metanoia. And in English, well, it's called repentance. Repentance is the answer when the problem of sin attacks us yet again. Because in repentance, the Holy Spirit turns us from our sin and turns us around instead toward Christ, who offers us forgiveness and life. And so we are reminded of our series theme verse from Acts 3, verse 19 this week, and I invite you to read it together with me at this time. Repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Tonight's theme for our uh, meditation is a peaceful pace. A peaceful pace. And when you think about it, peace and pace are often related. You know, when our pace gets too fast, well, we lack peace. And when our pace gets too slow, well, then we often lack purpose. And I think we all know lacking purpose can be a very unpeaceful experience, too. So let's ask ourselves this question. What kind of pace do you live your life at? Are you living life in the fast lane at 95 miles per hour? Or you maybe feel like you're limping along at 15 miles per hour on the shoulder? Where do you fall on that spectrum of busy to bored? You might notice in your bulletin today, in our sermon outline, we have a sermon outline for our message, and there is a spectrum there, a busy to board, a 15 to 95 spectrum of the lives that we live. Where would you put yourself on that spectrum? How fast does your life move? How busy or how bored are you? The truth is that just like life on the highway, neither extreme is good for us as Christians. In life, going 95, that's dangerous. It's dangerous to you, it's dangerous to others. But also, at the same time, going 15 while cars zoom by you, well, that's dangerous too. Both can leave us in a vulnerable position. And you know what? The same is true for us in our Christian lives. And so we come to this truth that we, we often get in trouble when our pace starts going too fast because it leads us to lose sight of what is most important in our lives. You know, we have a perfect example of that from Martha in Luke chapter 10. We have that in our bulletins in front of you. But we know the story, right? We've heard it before. Martha was busy. She was oh so busy because she was getting ready for a guest at her house. And not just any guest. She was getting ready for Jesus to visit. And I'm sure she had a lot to do. But in light of her busyness, Martha takes offense at her sister who is busy doing something else. Her sister Mary is busy sitting at Jesus' feet. So Martha asks Jesus for a little help, and I'm paraphrasing, but she's saying, don't you care that my good-for-nothing sister isn't helping me at all? Tell her to help me. And Jesus' response to Martha, well, his response highlights the reason that being so busy can be troubling for Christians. Because Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. In other words, Jesus tells Martha that in her busyness, she is missing out on something, on the one thing, on the most important thing, on Jesus himself. 
You know, when the pace of life gets busy and full, it's not that the things that we are doing or the things that we're involved in or the things we're participating in, it's not that any of those things are bad or wrong in and of themselves. But the truth is, our busyness is to our own detriment if our hectic schedules lead us to lose sight of the most important thing. This is what happened to Martha. And sadly, if we're honest, all too often this is what happens in our lives too. We let our busy schedules do the same thing to us. You know, as a Christian, we're called to make time to read and to hear God's Word, both on our own, both with our family, and with our church family. But if we're not careful, our busy schedules will start pushing all those priorities down our list. It'll lead us to forget to take time to be in God's Word ourselves. It will lead us to skip church in favor of getting something else done instead. Or even at times, our busy schedules are so busy that we allow that busyness to invade our thoughts even when we are here, when we are here in this place. And we're thinking about the busy things we have to do instead of sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing God's Word. You see, our busyness can lead us to lose sight of what matters most. So, is the answer we're seeking today, is it as simple as just just slowing down? Should we just all take it easy? Will that fix all our problems? Well, not necessarily. Because you know, when we slow down too much, well, then we end up on the other end of that spectrum. We become bored, and we lose sight of our God-given purpose. So it leads us to our second truth, that when we get in trouble, we do get in trouble when our pace gets too slow, because we are likely ignoring the good work that God has created us for. And we are setting ourselves up for temptation. You know, no one verse of Scripture illustrates this more than 2 Samuel 11, verse 1. I'd invite you all to read it with me today. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle... David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel. But David remained at Jerusalem. Notice what the verse says. In the time when kings are supposed to go out to war, what does King David do? King David stays home. And his slow pace led him toward boredom. His slow pace set him up for sin and regret. And almost as if it's on cue, the ne- very next verse of 2 Samuel 11, it leads us to see the situation that David has brought on himself all by not being busy enough. Would you read it with me? It happened late one afternoon when David arose from his couch and was walking on the roof of the king's house, that he saw from the roof a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful. See, David's pace had slowed to a crawl. He had shirked his responsibility to be with his troops, and now he's lounging around. He's just getting up from his couch late in the afternoon. From not being busy at his responsibilities, King David has put himself in a dangerous place. And faced with that temptation, he would soon he would soon commit the sin of adultery. And soon after that, he would compound it by sins of deceit and by murder, all in the process of covering it up. David's pace slowed to a crawl on the side of the highway 
and a two-ton semi of temptation soon ran him over altogether. I know that sometimes we joke, right? Sometimes we joke that we, we're keeping busy, and we're keeping busy so that we will stay out of trouble, right? You know, we joke about that, but there really is a lot of truth to that. Or maybe, actually, we could say it a better way. Maybe we could say this truth. Keeping busy with what God created us for keeps us out of trouble. Keeping busy with what God created us for keeps us out of trouble. And what are we created for? Well, Paul tells us what we are created for in his famous words in Ephesians 2.10. Would you read it with me? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You see, God has created us with the purpose of being busy, Being busy doing the good works that he has set in front of us to do for his glory and for the blessing of all of those around us. God's word reminds us that our lives have purpose, no matter our age or our place in life. They have the purpose to bless others with a word, with an action, with a card or a prayer with a gift, or with your time. And as the Holy Spirit leads you to do all those good things that He calls you to do, you experience God-given purpose and fulfillment. And it shouldn't surprise us, right? It shouldn't surprise us that when we, we operate at our best, when we are doing exactly what we were created to do. You know, when we use objects in our lives for things, and when we use them in ways that they weren't intended to be used in the first place, frustrations almost always come about. And you know what I mean, right? Like buttering a piece of bread with a steak knife, or cutting a steak with a butter knife or using a hammer with a screw, or using a drill with a nail. These are tailor-made recipes for frustration. But using something as it was intended? Well, that's a recipe for fulfillment. Brothers and sisters, though, when we fail to be busy with the good work that God has prepared in advance for us to do, for our families, for our neighbors, for even all the strangers we meet in our lives, it shouldn't surprise us if we find ourselves frustrated with our pace or if we find ourselves missing our purpose. So where does this leave us? Well, I think we've found for all of us that sometimes when the pace of our life gets out of control, we run into an operating problem that comes from our own sin and regrets. Maybe it's regrets for what we've missed out on because we were too busy. Maybe it's regrets on what we gave into because we were too bored. So what is our control-alt-delete solution today? When the pace of our life becomes too fast, how do we find rest? And when the pace of our life becomes too slow, How do we find purpose? What's the answer? Should we slow down in our lives? Should we speed up in our lives? You know, I would propose that the answer to both of those questions is, in fact, the same. That the answer is not always by changing our pace, but rather by turning toward Christ. As Jesus said to Martha, you are anxious and you are troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. One thing. Jesus. Turn toward him. Through the Holy Spirit at work in his life, King David would do just that. He would turn towards the Lord in repentance of his sins, too. 
And though there were grave consequences of his sin, God dealt with David's repentant heart the same way that he deals with ours, by showing him grace. And so let us, who have sinned against our God through the pace by which we live our lives, let us turn toward our Lord in repentance this Lenten season too. And as we do, as we turn towards Christ in repentance of our sins, we rejoice anew that our God gives us exactly what we need. He gives us grace and forgiveness and peace and purpose. You know, some have said that the whole point of Lent is recognizing our brokenness, recognizing the brokenness in our lives that comes from our sin, and then leaving that brokenness at the cross of Jesus. So brothers and sisters in Christ, let us do that again tonight. As we come to this altar in just a few moments, I invite you to bring something with you. I invite you to bring with you your sin and your regrets that come from being too busy to take the time to listen to Jesus. Bring with you your sin and your regrets of boredom and all the times that you have welcomed temptation into your life. Bring your sin and your shame and your regrets, bring them right here and receive anew from Jesus the very thing that we need above all else. Forgiveness and life and peace. Peace that can only come from a life that finds its pace in Him. In Jesus' name and for His sake, Amen. Having heard God's word, let us together confess our common Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. For that, I invite you to stand as we confess our faith together this day. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we worship the Lord with our offerings. And as always, we encourage you to find that red record of fellowship booklet in your pew to fill it out and pass it to those sitting next to you so that following the service, you can greet them anew by name in the name of the Lord. Please stand. You join together in the prayer of the church. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Hear our prayers as we pray for the church on earth and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, also we ask your blessing upon us this evening as we gather together to uh, have a time of worship, to receive the sacrament of the altar, 
and also following the service for all who are gathered together for the meal. We pray that you would bless that time of fellowship and that you would bless our food as we pray. Come Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. And oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy is yours forever. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we have learned about the pace of our lives this evening, as we have turned to your word, we pray that in busy times or in not so busy times, you would bless us always in repentance to turn towards Jesus Christ, that we may trust in him for the forgiveness of sins and for eternal life. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and you are invited forward for the sacrament of the altar, in the very body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ that we receive in with and under the bread and the wine. Thank you. 